Hello everyone, Jim here. Welcome, welcome back. I hope everyone is doing well and making great music. Before we start, if you want to check out my YouTube Shorts video, it's called Update and Thanks. No pressure though, just want to give a quick update. In this video, MuseScore 3.6, we're going to be discovering palettes. This is a video for beginners or anyone that needs a refresher. So I had a subscriber reach out and they're asking questions about the palette and there's a lot of things you can do using palettes in MuseScore. And guess what? If we customize our palettes, we can speed up our workflow and boost our creativity, which is most important. By the end of this video, you'll be able to know how to customize and create your own text and use the text in other pieces and parts and all that good stuff. So let's begin. Okay, like every software, especially music notation, things can get really detailed. So I just want to say right away, I'm not going to touch upon everything about the palettes. I know some viewers might be like, oh, why didn't you say this or that? I'm going to just touch upon a few things that I want to share because some of the subscribers reached out. So in the basic version, we have the palette over here. You can go ahead, mouse, click, and then move it as you wish. In previous versions, you can double click the Chevron. I think it's called that. And that will release the palette. To bring the palette back, you just click the bar up here. Okay, the basic version has basic folders. I'm using that word a little too much. You won't find, uh, let's say, fingering or note heads in the basic version. So we're going to click on advanced. And the first thing I want to talk about is the three dots here. You can go ahead and customize the palette to make your own customization folder really simple. Like I was saying, the three dots, you're going to go ahead and click on the three dots and click insert new palette. And then you can title it what you wish and then after you click create that folder will go above where you just created so if I do another one like bar lines and if I click there insert new palette I could do bar lines part one because now I click create it will go above that bar line because that's where I click the three dots I would not hide the palette, just FYI, I could be wrong, just from my discoveries, it could be a bug. If you hide the palette, it's really hard to get it back unless if you do factory resettings. I know sometimes programmers watch this, so if you want to dial in, that would be great. So let's go ahead and talk about customization. So the first part of customizing the folder is you've created one and you've titled it. Let's go ahead and use time signatures for an example. We're going to find time signatures. We are going to go ahead and click and drag to that new folder whatever you need to do, however your brain works. The next thing we're going to do is talk about palette properties. So go to the three dots and click down to palette properties. You might be on a laptop and you might want to go ahead and set the scale to a larger. So you can click up as you can see that. You can also move the cell size if you're going to be loading up, then showing grid. Simple as that. However, let's say it's not that simple. You want to get a certain symbol in that palette. So you can press Z for the master palette. This will show up. You can go ahead and write in in the search what you're looking for. Uh, I'll type in fingerings. And then you can simply you drag and drop to that palette. As simple as that. All right, so we're going to go to a workspace. And I'm going to give it an example now because in this workspace, I'm going to have this. I'm going to click the plus sign to the far right. I'm going to label it vid example click save for now so you can see it up here if i go to advanced i should have it there because i loaded it there but i'm going to delete it from advanced now i'm going to go back to vid example workspace and it should appear and there it is that's awesome i love that to delete a workspace is pretty simple my discovery is you go to view and then you're going to go down more than halfway click on workspaces and i have vid example and you're going to go ahead and delete that. One of the discoveries that I want to share and I hopefully it will be benefit for everyone is creating new text and then putting it into a palette so you don't always have to keep typing the same thing. I am going to go ahead and give an example. I'm going to go back to advanced palette. So I'm at advanced and I'm going to look at percussion and all of this I created through the symbols palette dragging and dropping which I showed earlier. What I want to do is add in a text that says um, practice. No. I'm going to create a text for percussion and I'm going to go ahead and highlight a phrase or the measure in this case control T and then I'm going to say go to gong. Now what I do is I'm going to take that text drag and drop it to the palette but you must press control and shift and then drag and then it will load and then you can organize it how you like. If I don't press Control and Shift, it just stays on the screen. I almost forgot, really simple, self-explanatory, but I want to throw it in there. If you have a brain fart or brain cramp and you forget something that's really simple, just go to search. So I'll type in slur. 
Da -da -da -da. Okay, so there you go. Reach out if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're finding value out of my content, definitely subscribe because it helps the channel out. Now, until next time, happy music making and bye for now. Thank you. I can just click on a folder within the palette and move it around wherever I wish. Hours of entertainment. Oh, are you still watching?